Hello, a very good evening to everyone, and thanks for coming to attend our webinar tonight. My name is Richard, and I'm from OTCS, and right now it's 8.30, and we're going to start. So first and foremost, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, please subscribe to our Telegram channel so that you can be kept posted of our upcoming webinars and uh, you just have to search for online traders club at the telegram app and join the channel so it is a channel and not a group so it will not be noisy it's not a chat group all right so alternatively or in addition if you also like to receive it as an email please go to our website and click on mailing list and you can leave your email there so without further ado let me now start the uh, slides to share with you more about our club. Now, OTCS, which stands for Online Traders Club Singapore, is a non-profit society formed in 2005, and we are a community of traders and investors here in Singapore. And OTCS, to me, is a place where we network, share, and learn, and we do it through a series of workshops, courses, and our library. Now, for workshops and webinars, we aim to have about 10 to 12 a year. This is pre-COVID, and it is free for our members to attend. And these are the good old days before COVID. <laughs> and this is one of the last uh, in-person uh, sessions that we had, and it was conducted at SGX Auditorium. They are our uh, venue sponsor. So we look forward to be able to do in-person sessions like this in the coming year, hopefully. And for causes, we aim to have about three to six a year. And normally what we do is that we will do a group buy with a trainer to get better prices for our members. All right. And we also have a library with over $6,000 worth of resources. If you'd like to know what are the items and how to borrow them, if you are our member, please go to our website and library section and you can download the pdf there and also find the instructions on how to borrow the items now again otcs is a place where we network share and learn and we do it through a series of workshops courses and our library and the fee to be our member is 120 dollars a year however for a time limited period it is only $60 a year. And in the days where pre-COVID days, we even provide dinner. So if we have 10 to 12 sessions a year, so you basically pay for your own dinner. It's a good deal. Huh? So to find out more about the club, please go to onlinetradersclub.org. And again, for those who have just joined us, Welcome, and please remember to join our Telegram channel by searching for Online Traders Club in Telegram and join the channel. It is not a chat group, so it will not be noisy. And in addition, please also uh, go to our website to join our mailing list. And here, I'd like to give a shout out to the OTCS crew, which is uh, the fellow members of our club, who volunteer their time behind the scenes, our unsung hero, to help us run the physical in-person events. So you know who you are, and we really appreciate you. Thank you. And now for the very important slide, the disclaimer. Now, you are responsible for your own profits and losses. The speaker's opinions are their own and does not represent OTCS's opinions. OTCS, its office holders, associates, sponsors are not responsible nor liable for your losses. OTCS events are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as advice. And when you're in doubt, please seek professional help. And uh, just like to let you know that if you have questions, please feel free to type it into the chat box that you see on your screen, the bottom right of the screen, if you're using a desktop computer, or if you're using a mobile device, then you may need to scroll up or down and type your questions there. Now, I will then hold the questions until the end of Ian's sharing tonight, and then I will ask him on your behalf. So tonight, we are very privileged to share with you uh, this very interesting topic uh, that is getting gaining a lot of attention in Singapore recently because the 
interest rate or the coupon rate is very attractive, superior to uh, traditional financial institutions, uh, what they can give us. So uh, in our committee, we have a bonds and REITs expert who love bonds. All right? So we have specially invited him, Mr. Ian Lowe, to share with us how to make risk-free returns using the Singapore savings bonds and T-bills. So Ian, I'll hand over the stage to you. Thank you, Richard. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining me. I hope uh, you are well. Um, time has passed so fast. 2022 is almost over already. All right. Um, without much ado, let me start the presentation. Let me try to um, share my screen with you. Richard, do you see my screen? Coming up for first initiation, we'll need to. Richard, is everything okay? Longer. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, I, I see your you. screen. Yes. Now it's uh, okay. And my just to make sure that, mm -hmm. just to make sure that you can see my mouse. My mouse is now at the word join. Yes. Yes, I see that. You can see my mouse or not? Yes, see your mouse. Okay, okay. Yeah, and you need to click the height. Yeah. Height, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Now, if you have not done so already, please uh, join my, my we are Lions mailing list as well as my Telegram channel. All right. Oh, Ian, we lost you. <laughs> I think your internet connection is not very good. Maybe it's the internet connection you here. Hear me now? Okay, now you're back. Yes, we lost you there for a while. Um, shouldn't be because now I think there was there wasn't any interference at all over my side. You know. Okay, now um, you're okay. Already. Everything Let's is okay. Continue. Ah. Okay. Okay. Um. So what I um, want to is um, help myself, help you make your money work harder for you using T-bills and Singapore Savings Bond. All right. We have a special scenario going on in the current market I want to share with you. And I do not know how long it lasts, but I have to share that what I benefited from it. All right. Now, um, for those who don't know, I am a remiser with Maybank Securities. I'm also the secretary of Online Traders Club. And for myself, I primarily invest for passive income, um, corporate bonds, as well as REITs. These are really, um, investing for dividends is really my forte and my favorite, all right? Okay, although today, um, it's risk-free, so I don't really need a disclaimer, <laughs> all right? But just in case anyone asks me about my opinion on stocks and shares, uh, there's a, a disclaimer. It's, I'm just sharing with you my opinion, and I'm not responsible for any losses or, um, or profits that you may incur. Now, um, I'm, I, will, I will be sharing with you about one hour of uh, what I think about the Singapore government bonds. But really, there's a lot of what I'm sharing today is found on this website. All right. Um, I, it is very well explained, and I'm just uh, summarizing and making it easy for everyone to understand. All right. Um, interest rate has been on upward trend. You know, just one year ago, 
the uh, five-year SORA rate is 1%, and now it is between 3.4 to 4%. All right, it is like a trending uh, chart. Singapore 10-year rates. Now, I repeat, 10-year uh, rates. Remember this. The 10-year rates is at 3.9%. And this has surpassed the two. Really, it's like a, almost 15-year uh, high. All right? Our six months rate is at 4.19%, higher since 1988. Uh, that is a multi decade high. All right. Now, does anyone think it's odd that the six months rate is higher than the 10 year rate? Normally, the 10 year rate should be higher. Uh, um, in the normal market, 10 year rates are higher than the normally in the market. All right. Now, why are short term rates higher than long term rates? Uh, look at this chart. Nah, all right. I will try to use my mouse. The x axis here is the time to maturity, the y axis here is the use. All right, the yellow graph that you see here is the normal behavior of bond yields, the normal behavior. And this is the 2021 and 2021 picture. At the end of 2021, the uh, two-year rate is at 1% and the 30-year rate is at 2%. You know, it's, that's normally the case. Long term is higher yield, short term is lower yield. But what about this chart here that we see? Now, what we are seeing here is the short term rates, those that is in months less than two years, are higher than a two year rate. That means a six month rate is giving a higher yield than a two year rate. Now, this is a strange behavior. I do not know how long it will last, but it is a strange behavior. Now, why is it like that? The reason is this. Market is pessimistic about prospects in the near future. So you see, in the near future, between now and six months and one year, the market is demanding a higher yield, whereas two years away, the market thinks everything will be back to normal. So. Somehow the market is telling us that currently in the immediate future, something may be wrong with the world's economy. And this is not normal. The normal is back to the yellow. The normal is in the near future, the yield is low, while the long term, it will be higher yield. All right. Now it's the opposite. Now, because of this, we need a place to hide our money for a possible recession ahead of us. The second reason why we should go into uh, government bonds and uh, T-bills is that we need a form of hedge against inflation and we also want a risk-free return in the meantime so that we earn something instead of just um, keeping it there, earning nothing. Now take a look at this. I, I did a comparison of um, government bonds versus fixed Ds and endowment. All right. And I'll use my mouse here. All right. These are the columns, um, government bonds versus fixed deposit and endowments. Endowments are insurance, or, all right. Short-term insurance. I, I did a Google. I checked the rates. They are quite competitive now. But there's one difference. The credit rating of government bonds are triple A. Triple A, all right? Now, what is triple A? Triple A means it's the highest possible rating that may be assigned to uh, issuer's bonds. Now, our government not only got triple A with uh, uh, one rating, 
agency or two, four different rating agencies have rated our, our government as triple A. All right. Whereas if you put your bank in a fixed D, the banks are normally double A to a single A. All right. Um, single May Bank, May Bank is only A3. Okay. Um, most of the Malaysian banks are A3. Um, Singap Singapore local banks are double A. All right. Now, um, endowment companies, again, they are single A to double A. All right. So actually, the our government has higher credit rating compared to the banks as compared to the insurance company. Um, they have a, it means that they have a high degree of credit worthiness and um, we expect that our government will be easily able, available to meet our meet their financial commitments and have the lowest risk of default. And yet you see the coupon is almost the same. All right. I move on. So SSBs and T-bills have are better than FDs and endowment insurance. Um, I just want to add a point here that I will be emphasizing over and over again. The best thing about SSB compared to all the rest is that you can have your money back within a month plus accrued interest. In fact, it can be as fast as five days. All right. So if you hold F SSB, you want to exit between five days to, to 30 days, you can have your money back and yet get the accrued interest. Whereas, can you imagine if you are in a fixed D and you and the and you want to um, get out of fixed D to invest in, for example, shares, all right? You can get out of your fixed D, but however, they will not be paying you any. Uh, accrued interest if you are breaking your tenor of your fixed D. SSB, you will get the accrued interest and yet able to exit uh, in less than 30 days. So uh, SSB and TBUs offer a better rate, marginally better rate, better safety, as well as better exit. Now, um, again, I want to emphasize on ease of exit. And that's the reason why um, there's actually um, another category of government bonds called uh, SGS bonds. And these are, SGS stands for Singapore Government Securities. These are bonds between two years and 50 years. Now, I personally find it not suitable for investors because when you need to exit, the spread is too wide and the tenor is maybe too long, all right? Like 30 years or 10 years. Um, so it is the ease of exit is, is not there. So today I'm not covering it. Uh, if you really want to uh, invest in SGS bonds, speak to me. Um, I may have a better product for you, such as corporate bonds instead of SGS. All right. Now, so for today, I will be only covering SSB and T-bills and leaving SGS bonds out. All right. Now, if you are a retail investor like me, there are only two choices for you, all right? T-bills and SSB. I wouldn't venture into um, Singapore government bonds between two years and 50 years. Now, if there's one slide that will summarize all that I want to tell you today, this is the slide, all right? Something for you to screen capture or take home. And the most important things is captured in this one slide. Let me go through uh, all that you need to know. Um, the first one is, is this. Um, the Singapore savings bond is really created for the individual investor. By the way, I'll be going through each one of these points, but uh, I will go in details here. Now, I want to emphasize you need to be an individual. You cannot be a company to SSB, you cannot have a joint account to access to, to buy SSB. You need to be, to be an individual above 18 years old to invest in SSB. All right. Whereas treasury bills, um, you can be a retail investor. You can you can um, uh, uh, be, have, be having a joint account. You can use a CPF. All right. So 
um, treasury bills is a lot more flexible. So it is both for retail investor as well as institution. Next. Maturity of SSB is 10 years, up to 10 years, up to. The key thing is you don't need to hold to maturity. I'll explain later. Um, whereas T-bills is short, six months and 12 months. And this is ideal for current rising interest rate market. Now, the max investment of SSB is typically below $10,000. And for treasury bills, there's no limit. All right. Now, the source of money, what will you use to invest? For um, SSB, it is cash or SRS. For treasury bills, you can use cash, SRS, and CPF. All right. And the last point, very important. Two words, protection as well as flexibility. SSB, the beautiful thing about it is you can you are protected capital real capital protection because at any point between upon buying it and, and for the next 10 years you can get back your investment amount at par at any point this is protection flexibility because at any time within uh, five days to one month you can get your money back all right well for treasury bills no it's only at maturity all right if I were to invest in treasury bills, I have to wait six months or 12 years. Yes, theoretically, you can have an early redemption, but you have to sell at the market price. And likely, if you ask me, if you want to exit before uh, the tenor has ended, you're likely to lose money because of commission and because of the BR spread. All right, this is the one slide that you all you need to know. Let me go through some of the details now. Now, for SSB, I, SSB is created for the retail investor. It is ideal if you have small amount like $500 to $10,000 to invest per month. All right. In fact, uh, I believe every working person should set aside at least $500 a month to buy SSB. It's like a, the, the word SSB. Singapore savings bond. It is a saving. You buy it to save. And the best thing is you can exit any point. All right. Better to, than to leave your savings in the bank. It is possible to build a zero risk uh, stream of income to last 10 years with SSB. And for SSB, you can only use one account uh, to apply. You know, for me, I made a mistake. I use uh, my individual account. I also use SRS to apply at the same time. And hey, they rejected my um, uh, one of them. All right. So, um, so now I know. Any SS, any per application, use only one account to apply. All right. And you cannot use joint account too. Uh, they will kick you out also. They will, they will take your money on the application and they will reject it on the on the um, on the day one on, on the first day of the issue date. All right. Um, for SSB, we can have only at most two hundred thousand dollars of SSB overall. So, for example, uh, last month I bought 10,000. This month I bought another 10,000. I can buy at most 200,000 total, total um, of SSB. All right. So, in the one individual person can have 200,000. If you have more, then maybe you can share with your wife. All right. Uh, use your wife's account or your children's account if they are above 18 years old. Um, the other thing is this. Um, assuming you start today, all right, to put in SS, to, to invest in SSB, all right, I will say roughly or typically, you will only be allocated $10,000 each time. Okay, every month there is one SSB to apply. 
and it will take 20 months uh, about there, all right? Because you may not get the full $10,000. Some months you, you may get $7,000, $8,000, who knows, all right? Um, the allocation is not fixed. So uh, you may need to take 20 months to have the full allo uh, for to fill up the 200,000, all right? Now, for SSB, things are not a done deal, okay? The coupon is not fixed. The allocation of $10,000 is not fixed. Um, so, um, that, um, so you have every month is a different SSB. Uh, this is the beautiful thing about SSB, that you can always get your investment back in full with no capital loss within a month and with accrued interest, okay? And with accrued interest, this is the best thing. Now, this is for myself. Uh, I, um, when SSB became interesting, when it went above 3%, I decided that as long as every month the SSB is above 3% coupon, I shall invest, all right? I shall put in $10,000 to buy monthly as long as the coupon rate is above 3%, okay? I, ex I expect to accumulate $200,000 worth of SSB over two years, all right? And the exit plan is after, let's assume I have $200,000 worth of SSB, at any time when there is a new SSB with a higher coupon than what I have, I can exit my lowest coupon SSB to apply for the new SSB with higher rates with no penalty, all right? With no penalty. So this is the most beautiful thing, okay? So for me, as long as coupon, coupon is above 3%, I will be having this plan. Um, I'm sure everyone have their yield target, the yield return target. So some may accept 2.8%, some 3.5%, uh, who knows, all right? But for myself, it's 3%, all right? So you, the idea is this, to build up many SSB to fill up to total 200,000 uh, so that I can build an in income stream, all right? that potentially, which I can even exit the lower coupon and get new co higher coupon whenever the market has, at no loss. That's a beautiful thing, at no loss. I'm a Kiansu person, so I felt that this is a very good thing about SSB. All right? Now I shall move on to T-bills. If you want a short-term bond, because of the current rising in interest rate, as, as, uh, sorry, T-bills is for you. Uh, it's so popular because everyone wants uh, a short-term bond at this moment because interest rates are rising. If you want high, higher returns, yes, get into T-bills instead of SSB. T-bills right now is about 4%. SSB is about 3.4%. All right. As I said, this is an abnormally in the market. For the time being, we have this situation where short term is higher. I do not know how long it will last. So uh, strike while the iron is hot. Um, yes, uh, this I want to remind everyone, this is a chart here where the SSBs are paid about between three to 3.4 because of this rate here, this between uh, this part here. This is the range of SSB coupon rate. Every year, uh, the SSB's uh, return is uh, different. Uh, as on the 10 year is higher, the earlier years is lower. But for T-bills right now, it's at 4%. It's even higher, all right? Now, the other thing is um, T-bills is so popular that the, is the issue size is much larger. Let me tell you, uh, 
I am uh, approximating, uh, all right. The SSB issue size each time per month is only 0.9 billion. 700 million uh, to 900 million, all right. Somewhere about 0.9 billion so far per month, the, the, the issue size. Now the T-bills issue size per month is 10 billion. It's at least 10 times the size. They are issuing 10 times the size of for T bills instead of SSB. All right. So uh, for people who want to invest more than ten thousand dollars, you have a much higher chance of filling up your uh, investment amount by using T bills instead of SSB. All right. Okay, another reason why to get into SSB is to diversify your portfolio. Really, for people holding stocks, for people holding um, uh, bonds and cash also, um, T-bills is, uh, is a wonderful instrument for that to diversify your portfolio to earn 4%. All right, it's a risk-free 4% to earn in your portfolio while you wait for the market to recover. Now, another thing about uh, T-bills is that you can use your CPF to invest in T-bills. Um, now, um, there are some pros and cons of using CPF. CPF is paying 2.5%, T-bills is 4%. So yeah, uh, you can use it, all right? So now uh, let me explain some details about uh, using CPF to invest in T-bills, okay? The first thing that you know that if you use your CPF you have to take your money from CPF to invest in T-bills, you effectively will lose one month of interest. The 2.5% the you will lose. You lose one month of 2.5%, all right? Now, each application of T-bill is $2. And there is a custody fee, $2 per month per T-bill if you use CPF. If you use CDP, no, there is no custody fee. If you use your CPF to invest in T-bills, there's a $2 per month of custody fee. So for a, for a six months T-bill, you will incur $14 per T-bill, all right? Now, you got to queue physically at the local bank, all right? Now, I will not work out the formula for, it's all worked out here, but basically what I'm trying to say is, if you want to use $10,000 to invest, um, to use your $10,000 from CPF to invest in T-bills, net, net, your profit is only $40. I calculated for you that you only make $40, and for $40 that you make, for $10,000 that you take from your CPF to invest in T-bills, you need to queue for maybe one hour or one and a half hours at the at your local bank, all right? And speak to the to the relationship manager there and uh, waste the two hours time there, the transport fees or whatever, just to earn the forty dollars. So if you were using your CPF to invest in T bills, you better make it count. Not ten thousand dollars. I suggest a lot more than that. All right. If you have hundred thousand dollars, by all means, then yes, it is uh, worthwhile to to visit, uh, to visit your uh, your bank, to ask them to uh, use your CPF to invest in T-bills. Now, okay, just one more thing. If you want to use CPF to invest in T-bills, you got to be physically at the bank. Uh. You cannot use online. Online, no way. For online, you, you, need, you can use cash, you can use SRS. But for CPF, you have to be physically present at your CPF investment bank in order to process it. All right, so the moral of the story here, uh, don't do it just for $10,000 of, of your CPF money. Okay, um, I'm trying to explain a very simplified process uh, of T-bills, of, of applying for T-bills. Uh, you may hear your friends saying about there's competitive bidding and there's a non-competitive -com bidding. It sounds complicated. Actually, this is pretty simple, all right? 
um, the process is actually just like a corporate bond IPO. All my clients have ex experienced this. The process is very similar. Okay, the simple way of applying when you go online to 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 invest in the T bill. All right, um, look at the first line here. You wish to invest in the in the T bill regardless of you. That means that for this coming, uh, there's a T bill that closes on twenty fourth of November this month. All right, uh, if you wish to invest regardless of the yield return is very simple. You just lock, lock into your bank uh, internet portal, specify the amount that you want to invest, and come um, 25th of November, you will know you are either fully allocated or having a prorated allocation. All right. It depends on. Uh, how many people or the amount of uh, um, amount of money that chose the non-competitive bidding in the same process as what you just did to invest regardless of, of uh, the yield. So if too many people apply, it will be, it will be prorated. All right, clear. This is this is very simple and is in fact this is the most straightforward. Everyone who wants to uh, uh, simply buy T bills, just go and do this method. It's the simplest. And you probably have a higher chance too of getting allocated. All right. Um, competitive bidding will be, uh, I think, a slightly lower chance. I think. All right. Now, this is the competitive bidding process where you want to invest only above a certain yield. Like for example, uh, this coming one that closes on twenty four, you want it to you want to invest only above four percent, for example. All right, so you specify the yield you are willing to accept up to two decimal places. Okay, so four percent, you just put four percent uh, in your uh, internet banking portal, and then you submit. Now two decimal means that if you are so uh, particular, you can put 3.98%, all right? And it means 3.98% means any yield above, yield return, any coupon above 3.98, 3.98 and above, you are willing to take, all right? So there are four scenarios here. All depends on the final, your bid is, larger than the cutoff yield or your bid is equal to the cutoff bid yield and or if your bid is less than the cutoff yield there are four different results okay now uh, i'm giving a presentation so i have to uh, put down the four the four possible uh, outcomes all right but uh, really you do not need to know uh, <laughs> all right um, now um, a few things to just a few handles to help you uh, is that if you are having a certain yield in mind um, know that if you put a lower bid you will have a higher priority all right. It's the same as a corporate bond IPO. Um, I tell my clients, if you put a lower uh, uh, coupon that you're willing to accept, you have a higher priority. So here is the same. Um, the other thing is you can use multiple accounts. The thing about TBO is uh, instead of SSB, where you can only use one account to apply, you can use multiple account to apply this one. Huh? And secondly, even the same account, you can even bid twice. All right? The same account, you can submit two different bids. That's the beauty of it. So if you, each time you uh, when you submit the bid, of course, they will deduct the amount that you want to invest. And if you are un unsuccessful, they will return it on the day one of the, um, of, of the issue of the bond. All right? So you can have submit multiple bids in like, for example, 
one at four percent, one at three point nine, one at uh, three point eight. So, um, and maybe those with, uh, for example, the higher the high, if you submit one at four point two percent, you put hundred thousand. The one at three point eight percent, you only put ten thousand. So, if the final coupon is higher at four point two, you want to get more. If it's three point eight, you want to get less. All right. Okay, um, the thing about T-bill is that uh, you, it is not technically a, a coupon that you earn at the end of every six months, but rather the model is that you buy at a discount. So if you want to buy, uh, 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 invest $10,000 into a T-bill, uh, you actually need to, pay up front 9,800 only. And this is the return. You pay up front 9,800, at the end of six months, you get back 10,000. So you earn $200 or 2% in six months. All right, so the you earn it up front. All right, you earn your coupon up front. This model is called a uh, discount model, all right? Um, I'm, I'm proposing a T-bills laddering plan, all right? Um, assume you have $100,000 to invest, all right? I, I suggest you can buy by averaging in, uh, um, put in $10,000, for, for six months T bill, uh, twice a, a month. So you buy twice. Every month you buy twice using $10,000. 10K, 10K one month. Next month, another 10K, 10K. So, uh, but as long as coupon rate is above 3.5%. So easily over six months, you have accumulated, okay, uh, not SSB, it should be uh, 100K of T bills over. Okay, let me change here. Um, sorry, I sorry everyone. I don't seem to be able to control my mouse. Okay. Oh, okay. Here, here I can now. Um, again, I lost my mouse. Okay. All right. So you accumulate $100,000 worth of T-bills over six months. When each T-bills mature, you roll over to buy new T-bills. All right. Um, I finished my presentation. Time for FAQ. And for, for, uh, for those who need to go off, remember uh, to join my mailing list at wealthlions.com and my Telegram um, at my Telegram channel. You can receive the slides for today's presentation and be notified of my free training methods on bonds and up, be updated on REITs with rising DPU. All right. Um, Richard, um, the FAQ. Guys, okay. thank you for listening to me. All right. Thanks, Ian. Thanks for sharing with us a good overview of what T-Bill and SSB is about. And I also learned something new. I didn't know can use multiple accounts or can apply multiple times for T-Bills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a very neat trick. Huh? They can, you know, get more, allocate more if you want to uh, for at, at a higher interest rate and then allocate less, a uh, bit less uh, amount for the lower interest rate.
Hey. Okay, but know that each application is two dollars. <laughs> ah, yeah lah, <laughs> yeah lah, yeah right. la, You'll have to yeah. factor that in. <laughs> yep. So, uh, for the attendees yeah. that are with us in the room, uh, can you please type in any questions that you have, uh, into the chat box on the bottom right of the screen by typing in your question, and then I will uh, ask Ian on your behalf. So, uh, Ian, you just uh, stay there. I will look through the questions and post it to you. All right. Okay. So for those who are attending here, uh, please type in your questions at the bottom right of the screen. Now, if you're using a mobile device, please uh, use the uh, scroll up or down to look for the chat box. All right. And then type in your questions. So I do see quite a number of people typing their questions. So I'll wait for their questions to come in before I ask Ian. So maybe at this moment, uh, Ian, uh, just now you show a link about the MAS uh, website, right? So. Yeah. Um, how to, where can we find out more? Uh, find out about the schedule. When are the cutoff dates, or when is the start date yes. of the of the SSB as well as T bills? Um, actually, every yeah, this you want is to all just on open one, a new it's all on one hmm. side. Uh, wait, give me a moment. I'm going there now. Um, give me a moment, uh. Uh, this is not the specific link uh, for the issuance for T-bills, um, but it is in one of the sub-links here. Richard, you want me to go to the exact link or not? Yes, I think uh, you can bring that because I'm still seeing people typing. So let's accumulate okay, okay. some questions first while you navigate them to the web page. Maybe a Google search will find it for you. Um, oops. Okay, so I cannot there. What is the search term you search for? Just search MAS, then T bill. Lah. Uh, just now, what I did was MAS T bill issuance calendar. Ah, okay, okay, got it. Okay. Then the first search result, click. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the first search result. And it's, this is really Google. <laughs> um, okay, so after, oops, wait. Uh, after, uh, you can still see my slide, right? Yes. Okay. Um, here, you click on the six months. I think first you will land on the SGS. So you've got to tell them that you need to click the T bill tab. <laughs> yes. You need to click on the T bill step here, and then there are three months, six months, one year. Uh, they have a three months here, but actually there's hardly anything here. All right, so they usually issue six months and one year. All right, so if you click on the six months, you scroll down to the lowest. So uh, right now, it is the 17th November to 24th, all right? 24th November closes. So you have to, um, all of us, if we want the 24th November T-bill, we have to apply by 23rd uh, November. We do not know the cutoff time. But I assume it is uh, 23rd November between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. All right. I'm sure 23rd November in the afternoon you can apply still. Uh, definitely after 9.30 p.m. you cannot apply anymore. All right. So just make, sh make sure uh, by the 23rd November you have submitted your application. Right. And then what is the 29th? The date mean that means on the 29th, they will issue it, is it? The result yes, will be out. The, the okay, so we put here at the top, uh, sorry, the issue date. The it's an issue date. So, in um, in fact, uh, on the 24th is the closure. In fact, 25th, the result is out already. Oh, wow, <laughs> 25th, the result is out. 29th is the First day that uh of the 
of the counting uh, of the interest. Uh. Yes, first day of the counting of the interest to the maturity day, to the six months. Right. Okay. So the six months will be the thirtieth May, right? Thirtieth May, the next ah, one. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. So um. So if uh, let's say we submit a yield, I okay, and uh, how do we know where to look for the yield? Let's say if we look at a closed one already, right? So uh, let's say the the one that is uh just closed, the most recent one that just closed. Correct. Uh, so for example, if you want for this coming upcoming that will close on the twenty fourth, you know that all of us do not know what the uh coupon will be. All right, we can only look at the last issue. The last issue is the one that closed on November 10, all right here. It's closed already, but you can click to view the details. And uh, auction results. Okay, there's a, you must click on the auction results here. Um... Okay, the cutoff yield is at 4%. All right. So um, the final oh. coupon is at 4%. Right. So all those percentage there were well, quite confusing. So, but we zoom in to... To the first one. You just need to know this, that ah. 4% is the last issue. Uh, all the rest here, are, um, they are trying to help people to understand... Uh, all the uh, competitive bids, you know, the average of the competitive bids, the median of the compa of the competitive bids, uh, that is not the final coupon. The final coupon is really just the cutoff bid. That's all you need to know. Right. Okay. So just look, zoom in to the cutoff yield. Lah. So yeah. at a point of sub uh, application, we do not know what's the yield. Then the next day when the result is out, then we come into the this page and view the detail for it, and then zoom into this field called cut off you. So that will be the uh, coupon that we receive for this T bill. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, um. How about SSB? What about SSB page? What? What? what, what how can we see the details or the dates? The, okay. The... So this is the MAS page. So um, for SS, if you just highlight on the menu. Bonds and bills, all right. And you put your mouse down to here, products for individuals um, as Singapore savings bonds. All right. Over here, so for SSB, it is very clear. Uh, SSB is different from T bills in the, in the sense that we know how much the coupon is. So if you are applying for this month, and you have to apply by 25th November. Uh, when you put 25th, it means that we have to apply by the 24th, all right? 24th, uh, not the 25th. 25th is too late. 24th November, we have to apply somewhere um, between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the cutoff, all right? Um, so I click on the view bond details. Um, okay, and now know that, okay, this is the average return per year, all right? So know that, that the longer you hold, the higher your coupon, all right? So for example, if you were to get into, buy into this current month's SSB, the first year you'll get 3.26. If you redeem your bond after one year, that's all you get, 3.36%. Uh, 3 all right. Second year is the same 3.26. Third year is 3.28. You hold till 10th year, you'll be paid 3.5 on the 10th year. The next one is the average return if you hold for the X amount of years. All right. So... Um, that's a calculator, is it? <laughs> so if you <laughs> in the dollar amount, you will show us the dollar amount we will get. Lah. Yes, correct. There's uh yeah, there is a calculator here that that you can play with. All right. Now you see, for myself, I love the SSB not because of the returns, but because that I can exit anytime. It is SSB. The beautiful thing is that it's 
I, I can be in it in the long term for 10 years or I can be it only one year. I have complete flexibility. All right. And um, it is building a long term income stream. Where else I, I find T bills is more opportunistic. That is only for the current environment and for the this 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 is probably just this year, and I do not know how long it will be there. All right. Where else SSB I can lock in for 10 years. Right. So it yeah. seems to me that SSB is like a long term up to 10 year fixed deposit that you can withdraw anytime and you get it by the next beginning of the next month. And uh, if you don't need the money, then you just sit, sit tight and, you know, get this interest that is stated there. And if whenever you need the money, there's no penalty for early redemption and you get it by the beginning of the next month. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so uh, yeah. on uh, going on, on your point about the beginning of the next month uh, is that, uh, for example, um, let's say if I'm I'm already in SSBs, all right. Okay, so if one of my SSB I felt that the coupon is too low, uh, as long as by the twenty seven of this month, I go to my banking portal and I say that I want to redeem, I will get the money by second working day of next month. So by twenty seven of November, I say I want to redeem. But the second working day of December, I will get my money back. All right. So it is as short as five working days. All right. Because we do not know where the weekends are. All right. So um, so between five to 30 days, you will get your money back. Right, right, right. So it's uh, quite liquid lah, in that sense. Not as liquid as cash or bank deposit, but liquid enough. Yeah. So just liquid plan ahead. Liquid enough and you get your accrued <laughs> interest. And oh, even when, if for one, two months or so, they give accrued interest. Uh? Yes, this is the beautiful thing also. When oh. you exit, uh, and uh, let's say I'm paid coupon just uh, two months ago, and now I want to exit uh, my, uh, that same bond that I was paid two months, they, I will exit with two months of accrued interest. Wow, no penalty somehow got accrued interest. <laughs> yes, this beauty, that's why it's better than fixed D. I yeah, see, I yeah. see. So good, good, good. <laughs> Very good. So this one can use uh, cash, can use SRS, uh, but cannot use uh, CPF. CPF. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, it's and this one must already. Be, yeah. <laughs> and this one must be your own individual's account. Cannot be joint account, cannot be corporate account. Yeah, yes, correct. And you cannot right. apply twice in the same account or you cannot use the two different accounts to apply for the same bond at the same time, the, the same <laughs> SSB at the same time. All right. right. So, uh... <laughs> so this is the one that uh, they had to, the government had to ration, uh, <laughs> right? Yes, Every month. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ration and it's much less. The issue size is just so far the past uh, a few years is between 700 million to 900 million. You know, compared to T-bills, 10 billion per month. Wow. Right, right, Big right. Difference. So they, they, they really want to uh, spread it out so that more people can benefit from SSB. And there's also a, a, a per person limit of, of, of 200K, right? Yes, total. Uh, your total SSB that you have. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so um, let me see what are the questions that are already in. Okay, let me see. Okay, so Angus is asking, why T-bill you suggest to buy uh, with a competitive bid of 3.5%? Why, why not lower or higher? Why 35 um, You see, this yield target is different for everyone. Uh, my... My return is different from my my yield re, my yield return that I want may be different. So likewise, my risk tolerance is different. You know that for myself, uh, uh, the more in, the most important thing is my what I that I look at for investment is the amount that I may lose or my opportunity cost, not so much my return. I, I, I learned through all these years of investing is don't, uh, not to be greedy, but to product, protect my downside uh, instead of looking at my upside. So I am satisfied with a low return of 
3.5% for T-bills. I'm, I'm satisfied with a low return for SSB of 3%. All right. Uh, more important is can I exit it and how much uh, time I will lose to exit. All right. So um, it's not a hard and fast rule. All right. I hope I answered your question. Right. Angus, if uh, you want further clarification, please uh, type in your uh, further questions and I'll ask Ian on your behalf. Okay. Thank you, Ian. So next question. Let me see. Okay. Intake is asking how to sell T-bill and how to sell SSB. <laughs> After buying, uh, of course. <laughs> okay. Um, I can answer the question. Okay. First, for SSB. Um... Let me give you the slide first. Huh? I, I have more slides, in fact, and I got ready for questions. <laughs> okay, so um, let me have a slide prepared for this. Okay. Give me a moment. Okay, where is that? Sorry, uh, I'm searching for it. Now, um, in fact, uh, here, here's the slide for you. Now, SSB is this column. Treasury bills is this column. Uh, how to exit early? Um, for SSB, you simply go online to your internet banking portal. Uh, that is the one linked to your CDP. All right. Use, you apply and you exit using the bank that is linked to your CDP. Okay, so uh, you go online and you say you want to have to redeem your bond. And everything's done online, as simple as that. All right. Now, for treasury bills, um, although when you apply, you apply online, unfortunately, you need to go to the bank physically to uh, exit. All right, and you need to be, to be physically there, <laughs> okay? So really, um, a, a few things to say about this. Number one, um, you need to be physically there, and I suggest, number one, you are in, at the headquarters. So if you're using DBS, go to the one at the Marina Financial Center, the biggest, all right? Uh, and... I have not exited yet, so I do not know. There may be a commission, all right? I'm not sure whether there's a commission, number one, but I know for sure there is a spread. There's a buy, there's a bid and an ask. So you'll be bidding, you'll be exiting at the bid. And I have a feeling if you ex have an early redemption, you will lose money because of the bid and ask spread. I have a feeling, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, we cannot see the bid and ask online, uh, so you have to be present there at the bank. So I, I, I really suggest that for T-bills, it is so short anyway. For $10,000, six months at 4%, you're earning just $200. So for $200 that you earn, you please, read, uh, please uh, uh, exit at the end of the six months. The moment you exit early, I think the spread is more than $200. It is not worth, not worth it. Ah, this is an interesting information. Huh? So, Intake, I hope that answers your question. So, uh, Ian, just to uh, clarify this part, uh, SSB, buy, sell online, we won't lose our capital and we get accrued interest. And up yes, to 10 correct. years, anytime we, we can exit. Right? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the money will come in by the next uh, second of the second working day of the new month. If yeah. we exit it by the cutoff date, uh, usually about 27 of the prior month. Yeah. Right. So, and can use cash and SRS. So, but for T-bill, because we go, you know, we go for the six months one. So, preferably is buy and hold to maturity. And then the funds just go back into our bank account. Easy. Right? Correct. Correct. If we, and so that means that uh, we prefer to uh, put in money into T-bills where we don't need it for six months, right? Because Correct. if we yes. want to yes. if we want yeah. to have any 
early exit while the option is there is very troublesome because we got to go to a branch, right? And that's the first thing. Secondly, is that we have to subject ourselves to the bid and ask of the market. Right. Yeah. yeah. And if it's illiquid, wow, obviously the other taker will, <laughs> will want to eat, eat us, right? So, yes, and then correct. plus maybe there's a commission. So yeah. these, are the ty- these are the little nuances that I think uh, is uh, very interest, uh, important, right? That you have highlighted uh, by sharing this slide. So that's great. Thanks, thanks, Ian. Ying Ting, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next question. Um, John is asking for T bills, right? Is the servicing fee by the bank two dollar a month for two dollar a quarter? Okay. Um, now because there are three different banks, and three and three different bank charges are different. The 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 charges are different. All right. So I, I, I can't give you a specific answer, but generally on average, um, both fees are applicable. So, 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 so number one, there's a $2 transaction fee per bond. When you buy. Okay. When you buy. Mm, All right. Okay. And there is a custody fee of $2 per month. That is if you use CPF, IS, right? Okay, yes, correct. Hold on. Uh, be, before talk about CPF, okay, $2 per month charge every quarter. They don't charge monthly, but they deduct only every three months. So $6 is deducted every three months. So this is the weird thing. So if you don't see the $2, don't be too happy. They only do it quarterly and it's $2 a month. All right. Um, now this two dollars a month and um two two dollars per month or six dollars per quarter applies to SRS and CPF uh investment banks. Okay, if you use cash to invest, it uh it will go to your CDP, and when one is a CDP, there's no such fees. Ah, okay, so. John, the fee is only the, the recurring fee is only applicable if you use CPF. If you use cash, then it's only the fee to buy and that's it. Lah. And then maybe the fee to sell. Lah. But if you hold to maturity and the money comes back automatically, there is no fee when the money comes back. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So cool. it's, it's, it is using the um, when you use SRS, when you use a CPF, because of a recurring fee, you just have to. Uh, Calculate that, all right? And uh, different banks is different. It's quite confusing. Really, um, I am using UOB and DBS at the same time, you know, because I manage for my wife also. So, wow, uh, quite confusing. Right. <laughs> right. So, in if um, you are not clear, maybe just contact the bank. Lor. Contact your bank. <laughs> right? John? Okay? Cool, cool. Okay. Thanks, Ian. Yes, yes. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Okay, so let me see the next question. Okay, BB is asking, do you recommend allocating 50% to SSB and 50% to T-bills or any other advice that you feel is good? Um, I, uh, that's a good question and I can say that it's back to the individual investor because I wouldn't know for me to, to make the decision or to recommend, I need to know the, in, the person's uh, uh, amount of money, number one, the risk tolerance, and the view, and the view of the market. All right? So uh, if a person has a lot of money, then I say T-bills is a better instrument. $10,000 per, per month is nothing to someone with millions. All right. Okay. But if someone only has 100K to, total to invest, then I think um, SSB is enough. In fact, don't need to go into key bills. Um, but yet, if I were to say that, hey, don't need to, to go to DBOs, only SSB. But if the person's... Um, uh, yield return, he wants only 4% and more. Then SSB is not suitable already, all right? So if you, if you want 4%, at least 4%, then 
then no choice, put everything to T-bill, 100K, went all into T-bills, and then six months later, you get your money back, then you put into the T-bill again, six months later. So you keep uh, rolling over your T-bill every six months um, without worrying about the SSB. So to, to everyone, it's different. It, it, it all, I need to meet the person to know uh, the risk tolerance, the time frame, whether the person needs the money or not. All right. Um, yeah. There are two, many, many uh, uh, factors at play. Um, to tell you that for myself, initially, I like the T-bill because of the high return. Uh, I went into T-bills first. All right. But eventually, I felt that, hey, SSB is a better instrument for me, more suitable for me that I don't mind getting a lower return. Uh, and the keyword for me is, I can get my money back fast. All right? That is the one that pulled me over to SSB in the end. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. Um, BB, I hope that answers your question. I think in short, it is that it depends. It really depends on your individual uh, outlook on whether you think that the uh, interest rate is going to go up higher or may drop a few years down the road, you know, because if, you, if it may drop a few years down the road, then locking yourself into the higher interest rate of uh, SSB for 10 years uh, would be advantageous because who knows, after a few rolling of the T-bill, uh, the interest rate drop back down to zero point something percent, then, then the the SSB will be a better deal already, right? Yeah, but of course, if the interest rate continue to go up for another few years, ah, uh, wow, then T bill rolling T bill will be a better choice, uh. So, um, I think the market is still very dynamic, so perhaps you may want to move in by tranches, and uh, allocate uh, you know, tranches by amounts that, uh, you you feel you're comfortable with, like let's say. 10 tranches of T-bills and 10 tranches of uh, SSB. And then uh, as each tranche that you receive, you see how much you are being allocated because you may not get the full allocation, right? And then uh, depending on the market outlook, the interest rate outlook, the, the inflation outlook at that time, then you decide whether the subsequent ones you want to increase or reduce allocation so that you can finish using up your uh, uh, buffer faster or you want to spread it out even longer. Yeah, that would be my, my take on it. <laughs> Ian, can you ma? <laughs> thank you, Richard. Wow, uh, very uh, concise and detailed. <laughs> <laughs> thank Thanks. you, thank you. No problem. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Um, okay, this is from Lisa. Lisa is asking, if you buy competitive T-bill and you submit it as 3.8%, and the cut-off yield come back to be 4%, will you be allocated based on 38 or 4%? It will be four percent. So, um, so the cutoff view is at four percent. You put at three point eight. What you are saying is, any yield above three, three point eight and above, I am willing to accept. All right. So the final yield was four percent. So yes, you will get the four percent. Mm, okay. It is not. Okay. It is not the bit. If you beat three point eight percent, doesn't mean you end up with three point eight. No. In the end, it's still uh, what is the cut-off cut yield finally. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. All right, good. Yeah. yeah. So, Lisa, I hope that answers your question. Okay, this, this question that Lisa asked actually also asked by quite a number of other people. So, I hope that also answers the rest of you who asked uh, the question on this that Lisa has asked. Okay, let me um, see. Uh, hmm. Maybe I just add on, uh, all right. Um, uh, for myself, who... Uh, who deals with corporate bond new issues, all right? So when I announce a corporate bond issue to my client, and let's say a DBS bank perp at 5%, all right, okay? And, uh, and they want to apply for this new bond issue. I always ask all my clients, do you have a minimum yield, all right? And I encourage them to have a minimum yield, all right? So if their minimum yield is, let, let's say, uh, 4.5 percent. Um, I will submit it for them that anything above 4.5, they want they want the bond. If the final bank uh new bond issue for the DBS bank is just uh 4.3 percent, they will not get it. All right. So the concept uh, of uh T bills bidding is 
exactly the same as corporate uh, bond bidding for bond issues. Um, process is the same. Right. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. Let's move on to the next question. Um, this question is also asked by several person, including a person called by the alphabet G. <laughs> okay, can T bill be bought via financial advisor or broker or remisiers? Um, yep. Actually, I didn't want to sell my services. <laughs> I I was sharing uh, this by by my own uh, uh, national service. All right, okay. Now, uh, looking at this um, this slide that's that's uh, on your screen now. All right. Um, for T bills only, not T bills and government bonds. Not for SSB here. Yeah, all right. Not for SSB. Only for for T bills. Now, I can apply for you. Uh, for your T bills, uh, but the minimum amount of investment is hundred thousand. So that is the minimum per tranche. Uh. So um, not ten thousand, not fifty thousand, not ninety thousand. But you need to have a minimum order of hundred thousand. All right, and our commission is 0.1 percent, which is hundred dollars. So if you invest hundred thousand dollars. Commission is only hundred dollars. All right, okay. Um, uh, but uh, what is uh, your benefit is that uh, you don't need to go online to apply. So, so, so for people who are not familiar with the banking apps, all right, who have no idea of competitive uh, um, uh, bid or non-competitive bid, or um, I can communicate by phone or by WhatsApp. 2G, for example, all right, and uh, on, on the phone, I'll be asking him, so for this coming T-bill, what is your minimum yield uh, that, that, uh, that you expect? And we will put in the order simply by through a phone call, all right? Um, now, even this is peanuts, uh, even frankly, to Maybank, wow, earn $100 for $100,000 investment, this is doing national service also. All right, first, um, so, but uh, we provide such a service. Another benefit is, uh, for example, the coming T bill close on the 24th of November, correct? 24th November. Um, let me, okay, uh, 24th. I told you earlier that you need to apply one day before. So 23rd November, somewhere between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. is your last chance to apply, all right? But if you go through Maybank, um, up to 10.30 a.m. on the 24th. So even at 9.30 a.m., if I'm on the phone with someone, he asked me to apply for the T-bills, I can still submit the order as long as it's before 10.30 a.m. on the closing date, which is 24th November, all right? And at that point, we will, Maybank will have a very strong indication level. Uh, we, have, we will know the indicative yield, all right? Uh, meaning that at that point, very likely we will have a good gauge of uh, what will be the likely you so to uh, have a more uh, accurate precise uh, bid price uh, com competitive bid price okay frankly i put this as one of my, my slide but i don't really want to sell these services because hey frankly hey just go online and click and it's just two dollars all right why pay hundred dollars when, uh, uh, when it's two dollars <laughs> yeah but <laughs> all right so there's no need to all right and oh. uh, yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so easy. Please try it. The banking portal is so easy. Just go ahead to do it. But yes, Maybank provides such a service. Okay. <laughs> okay, G, uh, I hope that answers your question. You can buy through uh, third parties like Ian, uh, or, but uh, I think he, 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 he said that you know, you'll save a lot more money by doing it yourself, right? So, okay, cool. Thanks, Ian. Okay, next question. Next question comes from another uh, attendee whose name is A. <laughs> Hi, A. Uh, A asks, if we want to surrender an earlier SSB, 
is there an optimal cutoff date in order not to lose out on the current month's interest? Wow. Um, not I. Uh, thanks a for this question. Uh, this is an interesting question. All right. Um, all I know is that there is a crude interest paid. Okay, and the assumption I now make an assumption. Uh, all right. Uh, the assumption is the accrued interest will be paid on a daily basis. Daily basis. So, uh, the answer to you is no. There is wow. Well, I I I I can't even answer. Sorry, I can't answer because. Um, I'm not sure what will happen when you say that, for example, on the 15th of the month, you want to exit your SSB and finally, on the 2nd of the next month, you get your money back. At which point will they take it as your last day? Is it on the 15th or is it on the 27th or is it on the 2nd of the next month? Sorry, I have, ne I have not... Uh, uh, make an early redemption, so I cannot answer. But all I know is the accrued interest is definitely, uh, they will pay you all your past accrued interest, but for that last month, let's, let's say five months ago was the last coupon payment. So for sure, you will get four months of accrued interest. But that last month of coupon, from the day that you say you want to exit, I am not sure what is the exact date that they would put down as the settlement date. Nah, all right. So sorry, I cannot uh, answer your question. I believe strongly is on the daily basis, but not sure of the exact date. Okay. And I don't think MAS put this on their website. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, no problem. Thanks again. Okay, next question comes from Rita. Rita is asking, is investing in REITs uh, giving better dividends and possibility of upside of capital gains uh, with calculated risk. So <laughs> is risk better or SSB and TBU is better? I prepared a slide for this also. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe I will go backwards. Huh? Okay, now, now this is the past. Huh? All right, and the question for me uh, uh, Rita, is uh, is it time to enter REITs or corporate bonds, all right? And really, thank you, Rita, for asking the question that I prepared, all right? Now, um, in the past, when the Singapore government bond is about 1.5%, when I say past means uh, one year ago, two years ago, three years ago, or the past 10 years, anywhere around the past 10 years, except 2022 onwards, all right? If the, gov the our government bonds was always about 1.5%, you, you want to buy a government bond about five years, whether it's one year, five years, uh, 10 years, it's all about 1.5%, all right? At that point, um, the top grade bonds, top grade meaning uh, DBS uh, bonds uh, or uh, DBS perps, all right? So I actually put here 4% and, uh, and, and a 5% when senior bonds and perpetual of Maple Tree, Capital Land, um, or even a smaller company like um, Ong Beng Singh's HPL uh, uh, Hotel Premium, or um, let's, let's say Wing Tai even, all right? I will want a straight bond to be 4% and a perp to be 5%. And top grade equities, I will also want my REIT to be paying between 4 to 5% or my DBS uh, bank returns or ST Engineering bank returns at between 4 to 5%. All right, that was the target. So notice, sorry, notice here that there's a difference, there's a delta. Uh, between what? you expected of for the return for bonds and equities to the government bond is 2 to 3%. This 2 to 3% is called the risk premium. You want this 
risk premium of 2 to 3% for you to take additional risk to go into bonds and, and equities. So in the same way today, today, if SGS bond is at 3.5%, I'm using S, uh, Singapore savings bond at 3.5%, all right? I expect if I add 2 to 3%, I expect a top grade bond to be 6%, a top grade perp to be 7%, and top grade equities to be 7 to 8%. All right. So, so meaning that if I want to buy Maple Tree REIT today, I want to get at least 7%. But unfortunately, Maple Tree um, is about 5.9%. All right. Ascenders, maybe 6, 6.5%. So, um, equities is not get is not giving me the return sufficient risk premium. So based on this, I prefer right now to go into into government bonds because the risk premium is just too little for me to go into. Um, clear on this, Richard? You are clear. Um, uh, yes, do you do you understand? <laughs> yes, uh, the yield spread or the risk premium. Uh, these are the terms. Uh, the yield spread of the of the risk premium is not good enough. So now, actually, I don't see any good uh, bonds, but I do see now. For example, uh, I I look at the whole market, the REIT market, which share to buy, which uh, which blue chip to buy, which bond to buy. Um, yes. There are certain bonds that are giving quite close, all right? Uh, a land lease at 7% return. So if I buy a land lease perp now, although the coupon is at 5.25%, because I'm buying lower than 100, I get 7.35%. All right? Remember that my target here is I want my top grade perps to be 7%. These are the few that I manage to, uh, the gems that, these are the best gems. If you don't think it's good enough, then there isn't really, all right. All right, so these are the few gems I managed to dig out that um, the aims read perp at 5.6%, but because you can buy about 95, 94, you get about 7.56% yield, all right, which is, um somewhere here lah. it's somewhere here uh, at the seven percent all right clear on this but generally i find bonds and equities not that uh fantastic now the best is really what everyone is going for the risk-free s uh ssb and t bills all right they are the most attractive um weighing not just return but also the credit risk Right, Yen. So you brought up an interesting word, uh, risk-free. So why, 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 why this risk-free word can be so freely thrown around for SSB and T-bills? Uh? Um, okay, uh, the word risk-free uh, is that um, when, when you use the dividend discount model to calculate the valuation um, price of uh, shares, all right? Now, there are valuation models that help me, uh, uh, that using Warren Buffett method, uh, uh, using various share modeling methods to arrive at what is the, um, what is the real value of a share price, all right? They have to use this term called the risk-free rate. And the risk-free rate in the formula is the government bond rate. The government bond rate is the risk-free rate. All right. So technically, when I um, uh, have this presentation, all right, the fact that this is a government bond, it is a risk-free. It's a risk-free rate and it's used, this 3.5% is used to calculate using the discount model in order to arrive at the uh, value of shares. All right. I see. Yeah. So because it's government, so it's treated as risk-free rate. And it's, this is also a common term that is uh, universally uh, used uh, 
when used in uh, for calculating the uh, inside the any formula that involves this word risk free rate. Correct, correct. Ah, you are right. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Okay, thanks, Ian. Let's move on to the next question. Now, CJ is asking in building of the T bill ladder, right? Uh, it only works if the next tranche you stays high or higher. If the Fed turns dovish, and the risk the risk would be that the next tranche you may be lower, right? Yep. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Of course, of course. So already, already. Uh, um. Let me. Let me bring up to the slide, nah. Uh, you you look at this slide here. Already, the past few days it has been coming down. All right. What is we this? are. This is the Sora fire rate. Ah. All right, Sora. I'm just giving you an example of a of a bond rate, lah. All right. Okay. The Sora rate has been coming down the past few days. So from here you can see it reached four, and now it's at. 3.43. Uh, somewhere in October, it was 4, now it's 3.43. So it has come off already. So this is one thing. Second thing is, uh, I can feedback to you that, um, you know that for Maybank, uh, I, I'm with Maybank, and we have our uh, rates, our borrowing rates, our finance rate that we lend money to our clients. All right. Uh, currently, it's at 3.5%. And uh, I've a number of my clients that is going up is going up um 3.5 percent and but some of my clients want to borrow at 3.5 to go and buy t bills at four all right all right so there is a there is a spread to make here borrow at 3.5 and you buy and you get into four you make the 0.5 all right but i actually stop them from doing it because a hey, maybank may anytime increase the 3.5 percent Right. However, in the past one week, last Thursday, you saw that inflation news that it seems to have peaked. And today, Maybank is saying that, hey, after all, maybe they will not be increasing the, just today's a fresh news, huh? our current rate at 3.5%, they are not, may not increase, may not. All right. So already Maybank is seeing the rates come down. And maybe this coming T bill uh, that close on the 24th, maybe it is lower than 4%. We, we already feel it this past one week already. All right. So you are right. The opportunity may be just one month at 4%, or it may be another one year. No one knows. So if you ask me, has the trend changed? No. I think. The market move in cycles uh, is normally um, uh, overextended too high or too low. All right. So when it went up too high, now it is bouncing back up, uh, uh, bouncing down again. We need to see the Fed's direction. Now is uh, November uh, 15. The Fed is meeting somewhere in the middle of December. Uh, what if they are continuing? If they continue to be bearish and want to increase interest rate uh, even more and at higher, despite whatever news that's out there. So no one knows what's going to happen. We just have to prepare ourselves, get ready our money. And then uh, if the coupon is very attractive at 4%, we get it. If it's less than that, we stay away. All right, so um, and this window it is I think only for a short while only. Okay, so as as you can see here, this this rate, um, why four percent now? Really, because it means that in the short run of uh, one month to one year, the investors in the market are pessimistic about the environment, but over over two years. They think that over two years, the market will be uh, good. So that is why the returns is much lower at 3%. All right. So how we interpret here is investors think that two years later, things will be good again. The 
bad news, the research are in months, not, not in two years. Right. So maybe instead of, or in addition to building a T-bill ladder, uh, which is a bit more sensitive to a rate that we won't know until the result is out, so is to build a, a SSB ladder, <laughs> right? But up to a limit of 200k per person. Lah. So then at least, yeah, uh, yeah. if you're looking at this curve, so at least uh, we can keep the curve up at 3 point something percent, hopefully for 10 years, you know. <laughs> Yes, so the SSBs, why people ask me why SSB lower return? It's simply same curve over here because SSB is between uh, one year to 10 years. So it is here. These are the coupons uh, of the SSB. Um, here's about three, here's about 3.5, you see? So that is why every year the coupon is slightly rising based on this curve. All right, right. where else the T bill is, on, is, is here? All right, yeah. Right, right, right. So TBU is for short term, I would say. Yeah, correct. Yeah, SSB for 10 years. <laughs> okay. Now, this is the current yield curve. Now, let's say two months later, the yield curve may be, no, this is called inverted yield, yield curve. Uh. It may be the normal yield curve. This is the normal yield curve. So it may be a few months down the road, the short term, TBUs will have the lowest interest rate and the SSB will have a higher interest rate. All right, that may happen also in the near future. We will not know. Mm, in fact, this I is see. the norm. The norm is that like T bills are lower. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I see. Okay, so there's uh yeah, there's a window opportunity for T bills, <laughs> yeah, but don't yeah. and don't expect it to last. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, CJ. I hope that answers your question. Not an easy question to answer because what Fed will do will depends on their view on the inflation and the key metrics that, that they are looking at, right? Employment rate and uh, inflation numbers. Okay, let's move on. So, uh, Eugene is asking whether all these are in Singapore dollars or US dollars. Oh, good question. Okay, it's simple an answer. It's in Sing dollars. Thank okay. you for your question. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, Jane is asking. Um. When we buy SSB, do we can we see it in CDP account? Um, yes, you can see it in your CDP account. It's there. Okay. Um, and then if no CDP account, can buy T bill. If no CDP account, use your SRS. Then it will appear in your SRS investment bank account. Or you can use your CPF investment account when you buy it, it will appear in the CPF investment bank account. All right. You need to have either of these three accounts. Right, right, right. SRS, uh, CDP, or CPF, I, uh, S, IS. Yeah, okay. correct. Right. Of course, there is a fourth way. You open an account with Maybank, you pay me a commission, it will appear in a Maybank's account. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, Jane, I hope that answers your question. So let's move on. Um, okay, Lisa is asking, uh, how does SS, SSG and SSB, I think, and TBU yield compared to corporate bonds? Mm. Wow, this is, uh, I, I love this question, all right? And um, the yield for corporate bonds are definitely higher, okay? Um, I this is the yield. Uh, this this third column here is the yield. All right, the ask yield. Ask means you, you buy the when you buy you at including commission. If you buy these uh, corporate bonds, the expo picture, you get this attractive yield. So instead of getting um, SSB. Uh, at 3.5, instead of getting key bills at 4%, if you are willing to uh, accept these yields, um, it, you can buy it. And of course, it's higher. You can see it's higher. Uh, uh, maple tree at 6.3%. 6 6 maple tree is Akong also, all right? About 50% owned by Akong, all right? So, um, and you Akong, are... Akong means what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Akong means Tamasic, all right? Okay. It's owned by Tamasic. Okay, thank you. Um, so now, 
to each his own. Um, some people feel that, wow, it's so attractive, 8.59, all right, uh, 7.5. Um, but to some people, they say, no, I still want a pure triple A, all right, or at least give me a bank bond, you know, like DBS bank bond. Uh, Ames read uh, who is Ames. So to everyone, their risk tolerance is different. So I, ca I cannot answer whether is it is it uh, appealing, but this is typically what the yield you get um, for a, a corporate bond today. Right. Thanks, Ian. So I think uh, at the end of the day, it's about your risk appetite and your desired yield. Right, so it's a, a balance between these two factors, and uh, perhaps it's not to choose one over the other, but to have both, right? Do it in the portfolio. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Mm. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, Lisa, I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, Celine asks, um, is it is it recommended to buy SSB since the bank saving account interest rate are higher now? Like OCBC, four point oh five percent. over T bills or over SSB, which one? Over SSB. Okay, the I I think a like for like comparison for fixed D is to compare with T bills. Okay, the like for like. I think she meant comp uh she meant the savings account. I think the savings account got a few hurdles to jump over to get four point oh five. Right, can't be a straight four point oh five. By just putting money there. <laughs> oh, she put 4.05, is it? Ah, I think it's the OCBC 4.05. I think recently uh, they have some... May not be because, you know what? Um, last, um, these few days, uh, ah. I am he I'm seeing that uh, certain banks is offering about... Okay, UOB is offering 3.9% for 8 months fixed D. All right. Oh, okay. So it is pos if it's 4.05, it's possible that one of the smaller banks... Is, is offering that, all right? No, so, she said OCBC. Uh, okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure mm -hmm. what is. So, I'm, let's make assumption that it's not those uh, 360 account where you 360, need to jump. I think it's 360 because it I, Googled. 360. <laughs> <laughs> I Googled. I Googled. 360, yeah. there's not a comparison because you must jump through a few hoops, all right? Wow, there are many hoops. There's many. There is a number of uh, targets that you need to do. The more targets you achieve, the higher the return. For example, your, if your salary is uh, put there monthly, if you buy their insurance product. So there is a few things. So uh, I think that is another, that is, if you are able to jump through the hoops, yes, by all means, get, get into 360, but it's also limited by the quantity. Maybe for, for the, your first 100K only, you know. So I don't think it's a like for like, comparison, I think we should be comparing, for example, UOB's 3.8% for the, for the next eight months, fixed D. Or should you go into a T-bill at 4%? You see, so uh, this is a closer comparison and they are almost the same. Almost the same but different. One of them is go for online. Because I'm an online person, I will, I'll, I'll rather go T-bills online. I don't want to go to the bank to get a 3.8%. But for someone else who would love to go to a storefront of a bank, uh, please, yes, I think it may be more convenient for the person to go to the bank to get the 3.8% than to go online to apply. So, um, yeah. Mm, I see, I see. Yeah, so have, when compare, have to compare the lights. Lah. So, Celine, I think uh, if you are referring to the OCBC 360 account, right now they are saying up to 7.65% a year for the first 100,000. Okay, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six hurdles to jump over. Some are easy, some are not so easy. So, of course, if I think like what Ian says, if you can. Uh, if you can meet the hurdles, then uh, and it gives you that higher percentage, of course, go for that higher percentage, right? Yeah. So, but if you can't meet certain hurdles, then you have to see what is the effective rate uh, for those hurdles that you can meet and then compare that to T-bill or to SSB. Yeah. So, I think the 360 account one, the, the interest is not, is they can change any time and for the year, right? So, but for SSB, is promise to you that schedule for 10 years. 
So it's a very different commitment by the party that you lend your money to. <laughs> Correct, Ian? Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. Mm, yeah. Huh? So, so I hope, maybe mm. you, 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 you can do both. You know, first 100K put into 360, uh, additional money get into SSV. So yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, Celine, I hope that answers your question. Okay, I think we come to the last question from uh, Jolene. Jolene is asking uh, for T bills using SRS, uh, specifically SRS. Can, right? Yeah, can. Okay, so then she's asking, do you mean we have to pay the $2 custodian fee uh, for six months? Because T bill, let's say I buy the six months one using SRS. So my point of purchase, I had to pay $2 already, right? Then yeah. I hold it for six months. Yeah. Then the money comes back automatically. So when the money yeah. comes back automatically, this condition, uh, so in between, is there the $2 a month custodian fee? There that... is. Whoa, it's $2 okay. a month per counter. In fact, it is not just for T bills. It is any counter held in your SRS investment bank. Any counter, let's say you have a share, uh, it is $2 uh, per month. And usually they charge every three months. Um, now, when I say usually $2, some, some may be $150, some may be $250, uh, and some may be cents by, because of GST. So please check with your own um, SRS bank uh, broker. Right. So uh, in a similar uh, to, uh, line, how about SRS? I mean, SSB. If SSB using SRS, is there also this $2 thing? Um, yes, it, it, it will have also. It will have. Confirm. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's only cash that won't have. La. Only cash, only CDP do not have such a charge. Ah, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, Jolene, I hope that answers your question. And with that, ah, we have covered all the questions and on time. <laughs> it's, uh, wow, well, we covered almost like 45 minutes worth of questions. Yen, well done. <laughs> okay, and uh, to all the attendees, thank you so much for your time and for all the questions that came in. I hope that this session has been useful and uh, beneficial to you to have a better understanding of how SSB and T-Bill works and also which one to choose. And, uh, you know, we, Ian is not saying... It's not saying which one you should choose, but to equip you with a better understanding of what each one uh, is, and then you can make that decision yourself, right? So thank you for your time, and uh, please remember to uh, join the uh, Telegram channel of uh, OTCS by searching for Online Traders Club in Telegram, and also join uh, Ian's Telegram channel, Wealth Lion. So Ian, do you have any last words that you want to share with the attendees who are still with us? Uh, thank you for your time, everyone, for joining me today. Um, if you have further questions, uh, on your screen now is uh, uh, contact me through, through wealthlions.com slash contact. Uh, I believe my phone number is there. You can write me a WhatsApp message. Thank you for your time once again. Right. Thank you, Ian. Thank you for your insightful sharing as always. And to everyone, please remember to join our Telegram channel so that you can be kept posted of our upcoming events. And with that, we wish you a good night and also stay green, all right? And stay safe. Bye-bye and see you bye -bye. at the next webinar. Bye -bye. Thanks, Ian. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.